Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and today is one of my favourite days because we get to watch movies, especially when it's on the LC550 from 8man. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the 8man LC550. Now, this is a budget projector from the people over 8man, and they sent it to me for review and for me to check out and see what I thought of it. So first of all, let's go through the packaging. We'll go through the insides, gonna fire it up, watch a movie, and then give you my final thoughts at the end of the video. So first of all, packaging. Packaging looks pretty decent. And again, if you're buying this for someone, giving it as a gift, I think they'll be pretty impressed with the packaging. It looks pretty nice. On the front, it's got the model number and it says excellent 1280 by 720p native resolution. So that is one slight drawback of this being a slightly more budget oriented projector. It is only 720p. But realistically, when you're projecting it onto a wall or onto a cloth or maybe a dedicated projector screen, the difference between 720p and 1080p isn't really that noticeable, if I'm completely honest. I have reviewed quite a few projectors of the past and they all do tend to look very similar. The main differences are generally in the brightness and also the contrast, of which this has a contrast ratio of 3000 to 1 and a brightness of 5000 lumens. So on paper, it sounds pretty good, but we'll see what it's like in the movies. Let's have a look at the rest of the box. So on the other side of the box, uh, yeah, pretty much identical. And on the side, we've got some specifications again. So it's got 1080p support, so you can put an input of 1080p into it, and it'll just downscale it to 720p. As I said before, chances are you won't notice the difference. 3000 to 1 contrast ratio, 720p output, and a rated lifetime for the lamp, which is an LED lamp, of 50,000 hours, which uh, that's a lot of movers. Also, we've got multiple inputs. Really, this is designed for home cinema use. You possibly could use it for PowerPoint presentations and things like that, but really this is designed more for media consumption, movies, that kind of stuff. So it says also about its portable design and also the fact that it is very, very small. So let's take it out of the box and see what it's actually like. So first of all, we get our, I presume, accessories box. So let's take a look, see what we get in here. So we get a UK cloverleaf plug or figure eight plug, whichever way you want to look at it. There is a AV adapter. So this is splitting your older AV equipment. So if you've got older RCA enabled equipment, such as Nintendo Wii's, that kind of thing, this is going to be perfect. You can plug that in onto a kind of 3.5 mil jack. You get a full function remote control. You get a user guide. We get a thank you from 8man. And we also get an HDMI cable. So let's take a look at the actual projector itself. And as you can see, it is pretty tiny. This is going to easily fit onto kind of wall shelves, that kind of thing very unobtrusive, very, very small compact, should fit pretty much most places. Now you do get a lens protector included in the box and the lens is adjusted on the top by a scroll wheel. And also there is a keystone adjustment on the top as well. So you can get the picture just level. The dimensions of the unit are approximately nine inches across by approximately six and three quarter inches deep and height wise, is about three and a half, three and a quarter inches high. So it's very, very small. I will put a full list of the dimensions and also all the features in the affiliated links in the description below. So if you wanna check those out, feel free to do so. Taking a tour around the front. So we've got our IR receiver on the front and we've also got this eight man logo and a kind of nice pushed in design onto the plastic front. Moving around to the IO on the side, we've got a fan outlet. There's a headphone jack, the AV jack for the cable I mentioned earlier. There's a micro SD slot an HDMI port, an additional HDMI port, and a USB port. So you can get your movies onto USB sticks and plug them in, or certainly you can use the USB to power devices such as your Fire TV stick, that kind of thing, or maybe an Android stick, choices down to you. Moving around to the back, we've got a IR receiver, and also we've got our VGA input. On the other side, we've got another fan grill. So there are two fans in this. So ideally, the thing is it has two fans. So two fans don't have to work as hard as one fan. So in theory, it should be very, very quiet. But again, we'll see that when we fire it up. Next, that is our power input, which again is our figure eight cable, which is included in the box. On the base of the unit, you've got four rubberized feet to help reduce vibrations and to keep the unit stable on a flat surface. Also, you've got a speaker output at the bottom here, and we've got information about the power usage, etc. There's also an adjustment on the front to adjust the height from the front. So you, if you've got it flat on a desk and you need it to be upright slightly, you can adjust it. And there's about two inches of adjustment there. You can also remove this screw altogether and then use some kind of monitor mount or some kind of wall mount. So you can actually attach this to a ceiling or the wall. 
On the top, we've got our keystone correction and our zoom for the lens or focus wheel. Also, we've got two LEDs to give you ideas of overheating, that kind of thing, or power use. You've also got your menu buttons, up, down buttons, power button, menu control, all that kind of stuff. But most people, I think, will be using the remote control for this. So that pretty much wraps up the tour of the features and also all the buttons and I.O. So let's get it fired up and see what it's actually like. Okay, so this is the Ape Man LC550. Got it all set up. I've got it plugged in with a TV stick. And we've got the YouTube app open. This is a video recently by one of our friends of the channel, uh, Kev from ClickTech. And let's take a quick look at the footage. Okay, so as you can see, uh, pretty decent. It looks really good on the image on the wall. It is purely just a brick wall painted with a bit of plasterboard over the front of it. So it isn't a dedicated screen or anything like that. This is uh, exactly how it looks on a pretty, pretty standard wall. So yeah, very impressed. Audio wise, very loud actually, surprisingly loud for what it is. Decent amount of bass, very impressed with that. So let's go back and let's look at something a little bit different. And let's watch the trailer for Star Wars so you can get an idea what movies will be like. Okay, so you get the uh, you get the idea there. Even fast moving scenes, brilliant. Actually, very very minimal motion blur, if any at all. Does look very very nice. I'm quite impressed with that. So let's take a look at the actual uh, menu on the device itself. So if we go into menu, you've got options for picture. So you've got your picture mode. You can choose from standard, soft, user control, or vivid. Vivid probably I think would be a little bit better. I maybe should have used that already actually, but. We'll go with that. Color temperature, you've got medium, warm, and cool. So cool is a slightly more blue tinge. Medium is, well, pretty much medium. And warm has got more of a ready tone to it. So you can leave it as that. Uh, aspect ratio, you can set to uh, zoom levels. You've also got 16 by nine, four by three, or auto. So I'll leave it on auto. Noise reduction is on middle. And actually changing between the three, I generally can't tell the difference at all on the screen. So I'll leave it to uh, middle. In the sound option, we've got sound options for movie, sports, or user defined, so you can adjust the treble and bass to your particular liking, and also balance as well. And you've got an option for auto volume. In the options menu, you've got on-screen language, so you can have English, uh, restore your factory default, so if you change some settings and you don't like them, you can change those back. And flip panel rotate, so you, depending how you've got it mounted, if you've got it mounted on a ceiling, you can mount it, rotate it 180. If you've got it set as a rear projection, you can change it as well, so you can do that. And you've got the information there which tells you which version it is and which firmware it is. So maybe useful. A nice feature actually is a time feature. So you can set the clock and you can set an on off and off and on time. So if you've got this maybe in a business environment and you want to have a projector running overnight with some kind of promotional display, you can do that. And also you can set it to auto sleep. So if you uh, wanted to watch a movie or something, you can uh, get it to turn off after four hours if it's not being used, that kind of thing. Or you've got a dedicated sleep timer, so you can turn it on for 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 60 minutes, 90 minutes, 120, 180, 240, or turn it back off again. So pretty decent flexible options there. Not overly complicated menu by any means, but certainly very powerful and does everything you need it to do. There is actually on the keypad as well, there's various options for the zoom and source. So if you click on source, you can choose from the AV input, HDMI 1, HDMI 2, VGA, or have it as a dedicated media player. So what I'm gonna do is now, I'm gonna disconnect my uh, TV stick, and I'm gonna try it in the media player mode.
Okay, this is the, uh, the unit's default state, so this is the media player. So in the top left-hand corner, you can see there's two options, uh, USB and micro SD, both of which have got X's by them, so it means there's no media loaded. If there was media loaded, then you can go in and choose individual things for the player. So you've got the photo player, you've got the movie player, you've also got the music player, and also you've got your setup screen. So if you want to go into setup and change any settings like we did earlier, you can go in and do it all from there. So that's pretty useful. Media player is going to do what it says on the tin. So let's hook up a PC and see what the input latency is like on uh, a couple of rounds of games. Okay, so I've fired up the PC and I've actually fired up the eight man actual projector on the Amazon website. At the moment, it's retailing in the UK for £109.99. pence. There is actually an offer on at the moment, so if you want to purchase it, there is £20 off of that price. If I just scroll down here, we see buy one, save £20. So there is promotion on, so you want to get one, get one quick. And you can pick it up for a bargain of £89.99, which actually I think is a pretty decent value for money. So anyway, let's uh, fire up a game and we'll see what it's like. So currently we're in 1920 by 1080, so 1080p, got V-Sync on, and we've got high quality performance, etc. Max FPS of 103. So let's, uh, let's have a game. Okay, so there we go. Um, I rage quitted out of that because, uh, yeah, not happy. We lost the goal already. Never mind. But there we go. You can see the, uh, the Windows desktop there. So it's actually usable. I wouldn't say that it was uh, particularly a good area to be productive at this resolution. There is a little bit of overscan, actually, so that needs a little bit of tweaking. But essentially, it is definitely usable. So you can open up your Google Chrome and you can go into YouTube and check out the videos, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, all the usual stuff. It is... Uh, yeah, pretty decent, and the picture quality is actually surprisingly good. I thought it would be uh, a little bit worse than it is, but it actually looks to be very, very nice indeed. Okay, so there you go. What do you think of it? The 8-man LC550, pretty decent. I actually like the fact that it's relatively quiet. I've got it running now on the desk. I've actually let it warm up a little bit. So the fans are currently running at full blast, and actually, it's not that distracting. You can probably just about hear it over the ambient noise in the room, but it's pretty discreet. I think you could quite easily leave that running. It's not much louder than my uh, fresh air from part two, which is running. Uh, I can barely hear it over the top of that. So it's not overly distracting. It could be quite easily used in a bedroom environment. And if you're watching TV or you're watching something, uh, an action movie or something, there's no way on earth you're gonna hear the fans over the noise from the film. So don't worry about that at all. If you wanna use it really, really late at night and you're watching a very quiet thing with some headphones plugged in, Obviously there is going to be a little bit of noise from the fans, but at the end of the day, it's a projector. What do you expect? So overall, yeah, I'm very impressed with it. Very compact, very cost effective. Resolution is good. Contrast is good. Looks great on the wall. Again, it's just a plain wall painted. So there's lots of imperfections there. It's not even white paint, but it still looks pretty decent. And I'll imagine on an actual projector screen, it would look fantastic. So if you are considering getting into the role of home cinema and you want to kind of dabble your toes in rather than going all out and blowing your entire stimulus check in one fell swoop, then this is definitely a good way of doing it. So this has been the LC550 from 8man. I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next review. Thanks for watching.